G'day, today we're playing Flycorp continuing the stream challenge. I'm just starting this one on the main menu because I just wanted to mention one thing. So I, I might have said in the last video that I was getting a new computer, so hopefully that would increase the the like quality of the the lagging that's happening in the game. But one interesting thing is that Flycorp is a clouded game, but at the very beginning of this series, I think I showed my overall progress. And you may notice that my overall progress is now down to 11%, um, having not completed all countries, no scenarios. And, I think only the free play, free play possibly correctly getting it right. Um, interestingly as well, I went into my load games and there were none there. Um, I had to... I tried cl uh, copying the local low folder of Flycorp onto this PC. Still nothing. In the end, what I did is I copied the whole folder for Flycorp out of the common folders for uh, in Steam apps. And that managed to get them across. So... Um, Yes, lucky. <laughs> otherwise, uh, they could have. Because interestingly, actually, if you go back, to, if I go to my old computer, that eleven percent progression is now recognised on that as well. So it's actually killed uh, my progress according to my other computer as well. But I mean, all achievements have gotten. So there's nothing that sort of I'm working towards in that that, that it really is killing too badly. So just more of a comment of this is how we're looking. So I think first up, we're going to break into Germany here, and we're just going to go straight line through this guy. Let's get Berlin. Nice to 64,000. We have a fair bit of money here. Um, I don't know if because I'm at, I just added a new city, if I'm gonna have some stuff just already break down, they might be moving along all right. It's these ones that are coming up red, maybe I've just overlooked them as a... Um, a city that needs assistance and Pico does look like it needs a little bit of help. Ah, get rid of that guy he's right on top of the other one. Plenty of red moving around in here though I don't know if possibly that was just the last time I played I had uh, had everyone sort of stuck for a little bit. Let's maybe just speed it up a bit see if we can get all that red moving around get these people where they want to be. Um, I mean, at this point, I think there's so many um, passengers in the air that this isn't even going to really affect our, our bottom line. We're making enough money that it's only going to be when the, it breaks down and, and connections are no longer being made properly that we're going to see a problem. I mean, I, I guess also having a city blocked is going to cause issues wherever they are. That's actually killed the lines in Uber Aber, Uberlandia. It's interesting that it's, uh, I guess they were what, here to these two, those two? Seems like a bit of a jump. I guess that's what I was doing. Let's get these guys all fixed up. Imagine that guy's going to go red pretty quick. Having a clean up all of the, the flights that are going to eventually land on that, that section there. Now they can pass through. Alright, how are we looking in Germany? Stuttgart. Hamburg. So what I'm thinking at the moment is that we will go up. This, this uh, episode will go for Germany and Denmark at least. And then we'll move into Norway and Sweden. Finland. And then wind our way down back through Italy into Africa so we will do Africa next uh, and then come back up through the Middle East and probably go Turkey back across the front maybe we'll see how we're looking at this point whether we should um, whether we should have these guys sort of just go from there and move across because the tricky thing is that once we bring Russia in, Russia is going to have cities here and it's going to have cities all the way along. So I kind of think that Russia should be one of the last ones that I get in here that I, I should have Kazakhstan, Mongolia, China um, all there so that they can sort of have cities weave in and out all the way across and then all the cities that are going to be here can just connect to existing lines. So it's, it's definitely going to be the most complicated one I think to add. Um... So we will we'll wait for that one. But now we can just focus on Germany. Those week those weekends have 
significantly improved as well. Um, at the end of the week, you can notice that we are now just sort of bouncing through those. Um, I've got a lot of little small planes down here too. But it does look like they have addressed the issues of of the weekend. Either it was my computer or whatever it was has finally kicked into gear. I have been to Germany. Um, where in Germany, I don't know. I did it as a uh, as a kid, but I do know that I went into Germany from Switzerland. I definitely came up this way. I'm sure I spent some time in the Black Forest, which I assume is this re somewhere in this region here, because then I finished when when we left Germany, we left for the Netherlands. So must have been some sort of pass through here that I went, but I couldn't tell you any of the cities we hit. I, I do remember though, wherever we ate dinner in whatever city we stopped in, there were cobblestone streets, which I don't think narrows it down when it comes to uh, Europe. I imagine there's a few of those about. It's really interesting when you can see it's a single city that is what's the major hold up. Let's give this guy two planes. See if he's the one that's. I mean, you can see that both of those. One of them's moving red. Every second one, I guess, is moving red to, to meet this guy's demand. Then that would suggest if this guy's red both ways too, he's got his own little demand that he's going to have to. Uh, Address. So I'll wait for this plane to lap him again. And we'll move that along to the next guy. But as long as we can see that one of these two planes is green every second trip, it means that the flow is heading this way as a problem. So every single plane after the one that we've just done is um is also going to have issues. This guy's a He's already got the two planes. I cannot see the two planes moving there. They're sitting on top of each other, which is why. Let's sell one of them. Let's offset them instead. Because all of these guys have two planes. So hopefully, if the problem is, is passengers heading north, I think a lot of these lines might address it to... What, I think this guy's the first one that's single. So we'll see how, um, how they go. This guy's got two, this guy's got one. So again, that'll probably push the pressure on that one. But I mean, this guy's only got one, two, so they can only push as fast as the guys on either side are. Plenty of German cities coming in. Nuremberg would be, I assume, where the Nuremberg trials took place. Interesting thing is I've never considered where is the city of Nuremberg located. The only context I've ever heard it in is the Nuremberg Trials, and I'll say it right now that I would ass I always assumed that it was in Switzerland, because I assumed that the Nuremberg Trials would probably have taken place in a neutral city, as opposed to have taken place in Germany. It does suggest that I know very little about the Nuremberg Trials except for their name. I guess something I've got to, got to learn a bit more about. Unless there's more than one Nuremberg, but saying it out loud it does sound like a very German name. Okay, so what way do we want to sort of bounce through this connection? I think we want to end in Hamburg. So possibly we want to go Berlin, Dresden, Hanover, and then down to... Oh, good spot to slot in there, Munster. Munster, Cologne, Frankfurt, Nuremberg, Munich, Stuttgart, and some galling. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the uh, the lag looks like it's, it's doing better. So let's, let's say we can both take credit, both the last patch of the game and your computer. It is funny that I've got a new computer and I'm, I'm playing what games like Elden Ring on um, on maximum 
graphics, but I'm blown away that Flycorp runs without, <laughs> without latency. I don't want to jump out of Germany too quickly, because I do want to give it a chance to get as many cities as possible. Um, I don't want to shortchange these new European cities that I'm, uh, European countries that I'm getting. Make sure they do get all the all the cities that are getting represented in them. Because it does seem like there's a lot of Spain that's still not not on the board. All right, I mean that'll cause problems for probably a little while here. Minneapolis is quite a regular appearance on our uh, on our problems. I'd say it's even, oh no, there's still movement. No one's taking anyone. Yeah, oh, it'll be cities I assume south of Mexico that are um that are not moving there, so it's going to hold yellow. Is that two? This guy's two. This guy's one. This guy's one. Let's add a second one to him. I'd imagine that's going to cause problems between Bismarck and Fargo. So let's um. problems and yeah let's take them for all they're worth I mean you can see that the um when you've got routes like this guy where he's read both ways it says that everything that he is doing is at maximum capacity um which is unsurprising that then Minneapolis is struggling again How many planes we got on this? I think we're probably going to have to start looking at three planes on our, our long Canadian routes. Quite neat getting to look at the, the map at a point where all the city names were going over each other and, and the names even get to go in the, the change color reds, yellows. That really gives a nice Christmas side effect to the, uh, to the cities there. All right, we are still getting Mexican cities. Good to see. Definitely glad we're not we're not just shifting over to Europe. That there are still cities in the Americas to come up to us. Monclova. Let's make sure we haven't had any pier in, in the south. Yep, someone at the very bottom. Can't imagine you're a big city at all. Let's learn about, about this guy. Hello, Williams. I was going to say, I don't know what Porto means, but I assume it means port. Port Williams, great, there we go. Does seem like basic Spanish, that one. That's on the Navarino Island, Chile. It's the capital city of the Chilean Antarctic province, one of four provinces in the Magellan and Chilean Antarctic region. Population of 2,800 in 2002. It was founded in 1953. So yeah, definitely not a... I, I am curious about... It's, it's not something I've ever sort of put too much thought into, and I would imagine that, that it's beyond the, the technical level that the game needs to be. About, does that reflect... If there are so few people who real life live in this city, does the game actually go, this is a very small city? And, and sort of correctly reflect that not that many people are going to go here. Because, I mean, you definitely see that there's plenty of people who are trying to get to... Um, uh, try and get to places like London, Los Angeles. So do they... Does that correctly reflect that... I, I mean, people will comment um, and have commented a few times that you can 
you can tell that there's a size difference in some of the cities. And I'll, I'll go quickly show you that once we've got these planes up and running. And I did up his size, didn't I? Yep, good. So if you, you look here, you can see that Santiago is way bigger than these little guys further around him. And in fact, if, if you zoom out, the cities that you can still see are the biggest cities. So those are the bigger ones than coming in. These are the bigger ones. And so these must be the smallest ones because they only show up at that point. I think is a variable theory of, of size. Altal. Imagine a lot of you are sometimes dumbfounded at the lack of Spanish knowledge I have. I think that's that's definitely looking like a much more full Germany. But I think it comes out of not needing it. Um, you might not surprise you how little Spanish would come up in my day-to-day uh, -day life. And if genuinely, if I if I could speak any second language to my benefit, it would probably be Chinese in both proximity to China, as well as the, um, so Mandarin, uh, as well as um, just the amount of uh, Chinese immigrants, that probably it's the most frequently spoken language that I would hear um, or could carry conversations with people who are bilingual, that they speak English and, and Mandarin. Bounce him up there, across to Hamburg, across to Oldenburg, and then up to Flensburg. Or well, we could run these guys across that way, then back across here and up. It really depends on what the difference is between that, which is 208, and that, which is 208. So there's none. So <laughs> it makes it easy. Rostock, Hamburg. Oldenburg, Lensburg. All right, now I'd say we're starting to look at a pretty full Germany there. Spoiler yourself, Hamburg, you got a massive airport. I can hear cities are still coming in, and the fact that those cities aren't coming in in Germany says to me that Germany might be done. Let's get Denmark in. Now, Copenhagen, I can tell you, sits right up there in the cities that I'd like to visit. I have a good friend that lives there. I moved there from Australia. I have uh, all my brothers visited it, and he, he talks it up. Um... What do I want to do there? Biggest, biggest thing on my list is the the trolls. Oh wow, we got someone out there. They're uh, in. We got a lot of Portugal coming in. Uh, in the was it the national parks or the uh, probably just parks? The parks of um, Copenhagen. There are I want to say seven. It's been a while since I looked them up. Um, wooden trolls that are around in the in the woods and things and i just reckon that's neat i i am a sucker for statues an absolute sucker um so that is that is right up there on on what i'd want to visit um i i one of the maps program that i use when i travel is i can't remember if it used to be called guru maps and is now called no, it is now called Guru Maps. I can't remember what it used to be called now. Um, Guru Maps, which is a great maps program for anyone that's traveling and you don't expect to have um, Wi-Fi network the whole time. You can download full countries maps um, while you do have internet. And then when you're in that place, you can just use that internet. So when I've gone places like China, Mongolia, 
uh, Nepal, where I've not had a, I've not paid for internet or not had access to, to sort of Google Maps or something, it is a it is a great alternative option because you can put markers on the maps to to sort of say like all right this is all the, the key places, um, and I so I really enjoy it for that. But what it also means is that I can just leave marks on it. So I've got points of interest in it. Like it's quite funny. So if I went and looked at Shanghai, which I I definitely used that maps program when I went to Shanghai. Other things I've put on it is like, all right, this is where the Australian embassy is in um, in the city. I, can't, I don't think there's an embassy in China. There was something. I know there's an embassy in, in say, um, Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia. So I would go like, all right, mark this. So I've always got reference of where that is, even if I don't have internet or anything. All I need is my phone to have battery. Um, but what I also do is just have those markers. And so in Denmark, in Copenhagen, if you go look at that map, all of the locations of the trolls are there, even though I have no holidays booked for, for Copenhagen. Um, this is a real pain to be at the, uh, in the middle of the line. Uh, yeah, no plans to go to Copenhagen, I reckon, but it's probably three, four years ago I marked all those on that map. And, uh, one day, one day I'll get used out of them, I'm sure. If the, if the, if the uh, trolls are still around at that point. I mean, I'll, obviously all I have to do here is just put, um, put more planes between these three connections and, and it'll be fine, so... I said not ideal, but workable. Let's learn about what... Ponto Delgado. Alright, before we look it up, who do we think Ponto Delgado sponsors? Is that Portuguese? I mean, knowing that Porto means port in Spanish, we can probably confidently say it's probably not a Spanish one. Ponta Delgada. Delgada sounds like a thing as opposed to a, a name of a place too. Yeah, it is Portuguese. Population in 2011 was 305. But definitely we're not not a big one out there in the middle of the Atlantic. I'm not sure what the most significant island mass is actually once you get out into the middle of the Atlantic. I mean certainly unlike um, the Pacific you can see Hawaii on the map here. Um, definitely not the case for these little guys. Oh, there we are, we, we are getting a little bit more Spain which is good. coming in Denmark, right? Good. Puts us in the right direction for bouncing into this. probably Sweden. I would imagine that we should go Sweden and Norway almost in tandem, working our way up between the two to end up sort of crossing over into Finland and coming down. Again, cities, uh, countries that I would imagine that the majority of their cities and populations exist in the south. I would imagine those nights would get, uh, those winter nights would get quite long north in, in Norway. They are, if they've had the sunrise at all. Oh, we got a friend out here. Forda. Alright. What do we think? Is Forda going to be bigger or smaller than Ponte Delgada? That's in the same island grouping, which may not surprise you based on its proximity there. It is Portuguese as well. Oh, am I looking at the wrong one? Maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. Still Portuguese, but let's go order Atlantic.
Maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Population... 15,000 in 2011. So, I would say it's probably the more major city next to its, its mate here. Um, we will cut this one. And run him down. Let's see if they actually overlap. They don't. Cool. Because that means that these two are slightly closer to being a similar length than making this guy longer. Being already the longest of the, the flights. Really getting out in the Pacific, right? The Atlantic there. I feel like we've gotten more cities than what I've seen there. Let's have a look. We're still getting a few in Mexico. There's one. Salt flat. I guess I can sort of get a sense of what's there. I imagine there's too many cities in the world with the word salt flat in their name. Again, that can't be big. <laughs> These cities that are showing up are definitely fascinating me for their... Surely their... Surely this is their one time in the sun to appear on a flight. Flight map. there. Well, maybe it's that's a translation because Solar, the Uyuni, I could find, and that looks like this is in the right spot. It's the world's largest salt flat at over 10,000 square kilometers. I'm sure it's going to give me a population. Uh, let's see what we can find. We're getting a few guys in Bolivia here. Maybe I've jumped too quickly out of Bolivia that it's finally got its... I'm just showing. Thousand is what I'm getting. Twenty-nine thousand. I would guess that that's in the region. Like quite, quite hefty. I mean, if it's world big salt flat, I can imagine there's a bit of a tourism, like a minor tourism thing. I mean, I feel like a hundred thousand, uh, a thousand square kilometers of a of a salt flat is about as interesting to see as ten thousand, unless you, you're doing it from the air. Uh, let's add you down here. Around here. Bolivia. Look at the. I was watching one of the the ads or um the store page for um the Flycorp, and it did list the amount of cities that exist on it. And I thought, oh boy, like we could we could end up with a fair few here. needlessly long if we connect that that way.
Let's do that first. All right, let's go. Yeah, all right, we'll keep it simple. We're gonna have to address the amount of planes moving on that, but. Let's do a quick scan over to see if anyone else in South America is showing up. Oh, looks like we're all calm again there. Unsurprisingly, this guy is struggling. Well, I mean, especially if I've only got him with this, this one plane there. And we've got another guy in his island, island network there. Funny that there's going to be this um, tiny little connection of island hopping that you have to do in the middle of getting from where southern Portugal to further southern Portugal. One thing I, I have to try and remember to do is I think at the very end of this string challenge we have to work out what probably the average flight duration would be on any one of these. So say it was half an hour. No, we'll go an hour. Say that any one of these flights took an hour, but then also any processing that you had to do through an airport meant that you needed half an hour arrival, half an hour landing before you could get onto your next flight. So every single flight, connecting flight that you would have to take here would be two hours on average. To keep it simple and then try and work out how long it would take you to get from Falkland Islands to what's the last place going to be? New Zealand? New Caledonia? As I can I can't imagine that many people would, would like that would be what retirees doing oh what are you doing? oh we're going for the whole length of the line how would you even map? How would you even like mentally draining that that would be? I can't believe we've got more cities in Denmark. By the way, we've got three. Come on, there's more in that Denmark, surely. Um, what the hell long have we got? I need a couple minutes. All right, let's slow this bad boy down and let's see if we can take care of some cities that are struggling. Because even if you sort of went, oh, we're retiring, so we're going to go the whole line. If this was a train line, fine. Because then what you could do is basically you just, your bags are staying on there. You basically, you're just getting a cabin and you were just riding this whole wild ride. And I, and possibly that would be the way that you would operate as a, as a plane here. That each individual plane is actually just carrying on down the line. Uh, and just stopping at every, every single stop. But, um... way is it that you're struggling? Is it going this way, is it? Give you the second plane then. Um, because if that was the case, and then, then like this might be like something that you would do as a retiree. You spend a year riding the line. We're gonna go... But I mean even then, how would you do it? Would you... Because if you lived somewhere like, say for example, the line was as it stood right now, and you lived in New York City. If you went, all right, I want to ride the line, would you travel all the way to, to Denmark via the line to then have to travel all the way back through your home city, back down here, and then travel all the way back. That seems like a pain. I mean, that, that is possibly the biggest argument that I have for those people that have asked me that I, or, or said to me that I should make the whole line a, a loop in the end, which I quite easily do because I it's quite possible that the French Southern Antarctic Islands could be the end point. And so you just go one, two across. Um, the only reason I see to do that is to make retirees feel like they can actually do the whole line, that you can leave heading one direction from your house and arrive back the other one. I'm trying to take empathy for the people that exist with this line is the only reason I think that I might do that. Do we unhappy with Santa Clara? You could definitely be a bigger airport. That Latunas. These are really short lines. This is the closest I think we have to an overlap. 
that is this guy's coming into here going that way or is this guy's going straight across i think i've had a few comments on that one to say that i've got one double connection it's not it's it just looks that way it's the only point i think the line crosses itself well, i suppose it does it there too not too much we can do on these islands res All right, well, I'd say we were probably coming to the end of this one. Uh, the additions of Germany and Denmark don't seem to be the major points of that one. Bolivia seemed to probably make a, a big of a splash, although there's plenty of Germany covered there. Very spaced out, um, the way the German cities are there. They're almost in a perfect grid. But there's like the 1.5 meters apart rule gotten used to over the last two years they seem to have, have really taken to their city design but all right next time we'll uh, we'll go for norway and sweden any questions or comments feel free to chuck them below until then catch you later see ya